Amber Heard has sold her beloved California home in the Yucca Valley for a little over a million bucks, leaving her about $500,000 in profit. And she definitely needs that money as we know she is in dire financial straits. Her lawyers essentially said as much when they admitted that she did not have the more than $8 million she was ordered by a judge to pay Johnny Depp for defaming him. Friends, let's talk about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard because holy moly, do I have some major updates for you. So don't ask me why, but as of today, a bunch of court documents became unsealed and these court documents contained information that both Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's legal teams wanted to use during the trial, but they weren't allowed to because the judge said this material had nothing to do with the defamation case. However, that doesn't mean that these documents aren't tea filled. It's a lot. So first up, when it comes to Johnny Depp's legal team, they apparently wanted to present information that during Amber Heard's early years of her career, she was an escort and an exotic dancer. Johnny's legal team also reportedly did have proof that Amber was the one who cut off his finger. This proof came from a deposition with Amber Heard's sister's boss. Apparently, Amber Heard's sister's boss was present when Amber Heard called her sister and told her that she cut off Johnny's finger, which is crazy. And as far as Amber's concerned, her team wanted to bring up that Johnny Depp had a very close friendship with Marilyn Manson. There were some questionable texts between the two. It's just crazy to me that there's still new information coming out about this Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial and it's not going to stop anytime soon now that Amber Heard's appealing the verdict. Lucky us. <laughs> You're done. You're done. Y'all, this is exactly the reason she wanted every single document sealed. In part of Jennifer Howell's next deposition she claimed that Whitney was with her when Amber contacted her and Whitney was freaking out because Amber cut off Johnny's finger. Jennifer Howell told Camille Vasquez in the deposition she cut off his finger she cut off his finger and when Jennifer asked Whitney who she said Amber cut Johnny's finger off with a bottle. Beach. All your truths are coming out in those unsealed documents, and I'm here for it. 45 documents from Debt V. Heard were unsealed by Judge A and are now available. It's about 6,600 pages. 6,600? But in case you don't want to do that kind of light reading, let me break it down for you. There's emails between lawyers, lots of repeating info, 65 different motions that essentially pertain to whether or not certain evidence and testimony can be included in the trial, expert disclosures like Dr. Hughes and Dr. Spiegel, there's sanctions litigation over the forensic extraction of Amber's devices, aka the metadata. There's a motion against Elaine for violating a protective order. There's even more information on the UK trial and judgment. And there's discussion around Depp's team wanting to bring in Amber's naky pictures and her past as an exotic dancer. Finally, there are excerpts from the trial transcripts. Not all of them, but some. And my favorite are that some of these include the sidebar conversation where the public mic was cut, but they're included in the transcript and oh, they are so good. If you want me to break down more of the specifics and hear some of my favorite sassy details that are included, stay tuned. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard both appealed the judgment in the lower court. Are we going to see another trial? No, we're not. So an appeal is not a retrial of the case as it went forward in the lower court or in the trial court. Instead, an appellate court is really only looking to see if there was an error of law. And that error has to be cause for reversal or to retry the case. So depending on the grounds for appeal, the appellate court looks at the trial court case with a different lens or a different standard of review. So for example, one standard of review is abuse of discretion, and the court is really only looking for whether the trial court made an error that was an abuse of discretion. Another standard of review is de novo, which means from the beginning or anew in Latin, and that basically means that the appellate court is looking at this issue, and it's usually applied to questions of law, with fresh eyes. So they're not giving any deference to the trial court's decision. There's another standard of review called clear error. It's reviewable for clear error, and that's usually for questions of fact. And what that means is that the appellate court is going to look at this question of fact, and they are giving deference to the lower court's decision in this regard, and they're only reviewing it if there is clear error with the decision. Standards of review are pretty tricky, so that was like a very basic overview. Now, the way the court actually looks at this stuff is through briefs and um, argument that's submitted to the court. So as you know, Johnny and Amber both filed their notice of appeal. 
Well, now they're, they're both going to have to file appellate briefs. And in their appellate briefs, they will have hyperlinked links to all of the exhibits from trial, testimony from trial, transcripts from trial, all of this stuff. So none of the witnesses are going to testify again. That's not going to happen. Instead, what the court does is it, the appellate court looks at the evidence that was presented from the trial court. So that's one of the reasons you saw that court reporter during the trial taking down every single word. It's because the appellate court will need every single word when they're reviewing whatever issue is appealed. Let's talk strategy. I've gotten this comment a lot. Is Johnny Depp now gonna go after Amber Heard for the judgment? He can, since she didn't post the suspension bond. Now, from a legal point of view, he absolutely should. For one, he's entitled to, and two, it makes it more difficult for her to pursue an appeal. You always want to incentivize the other party to settle the case, and they are still duking it out. Now it's going to be on the appellate level. So from a legal point of view, he wants to make that difficult. He wants her to be incentivized to settle. Now, from a PR point of view, how will that look? I mean, his PR team might say something different, but if he was a typical client, he would absolutely go after her for the money. She could then start to pay or put up a suspension bond and stop him from going after the money.